Welcome to the lesson 34 of industrial instrumentation. In this lesson, we will study smart sensor. Now, is the talk of today, I mean when you call the smart sensors and suddenly, I mean there are sensors, we sometimes we call sensors, sometimes we call transducers as a whole, sometimes we call instrument and there was intelligent instruments, so intelligent sensor, suddenly we started to call it a smart sensor, right. Obviously, there is some differentiation between the ordinary sensors, smart sensor and the, uh, and the intelligent sensor. So, in this particular lesson, we will uh, look at all those and we will more uh, discuss in more details, I mean when the sensors can be called as a smart sensor. There are some definitions, so even though that is not widely accepted, but there are some people who actually develop some kind of smart sensor, so those are discussed. Uh, they have developed some norms or they have developed some terminology, I mean on the smart sensors. So, in this lesson, we will discuss all this in details. Let us look at the uh, contents of this lesson. Lesson 34, smart sensors, contents, introduction to integrated smart and intelligent sensors. Okay. There are integrated sensors, smart sensors. Uh, that means, if you have some sensors with the signal conditioning circuitry itself on the chip itself, we call it smart sensor. I mean, we can call it integrated sensor, not necessarily intelligent one, right. So, it starts from there. Then the working principles of intelligent sensors, some examples of smart sensors, these are basically we will cover in this particular lesson, right. At the end of the lesson, the viewer will know what is mean by smart sensors, difference between the integrated and smart sensors, and some different fields of application of smart sensors. I am sorry that there is some error, it will be at the end of the lesson, uh, the viewer will know. So, this is should know there. So, it should be wiped out like this one. Okay. So, at the end of the lesson, the viewer will know it will like this. Now, integrated smart and intelligent sensor, let us look at all this in general, then we can classify one by one, right. The successful applications of many types of solid state sensors, that means semiconductor sensors, solid states we are using at the semiconductor sensors, has stimulated the market, but led to a demand for either a lower unit cost or an enhanced functionality to improve the market value. You see that if you say some smart sensors and with a huge value, nobody will buy. Suppose if you are telling about some uh, temperature sensors, which is based of um, semiconductor based, uh, which have integrated I mean, circuitry inside. So, that is a smart sensors with some intelligence functions, but the cost, if the cost is extremely high, so nobody will buy that type of sensors. So, they will rather use the thermistors and with signal conditioning, they will make it outside, right. So, the cost factor is very important while you are choosing the sensors or designing the sensor. That is the reason we are calling the successful applications of many types of solid state sensors has stimulated the market, but led to a demand for either a lower unit cost or an enhanced functionality to improve the market value. Okay. So, if until unless the functionality is over, suppose it can discard some value which is coming uh, off the range that type of thing, it has some decision making uh, functionality. So, then only uh, if the, even if the cost is higher, people can buy or the industry can buy, in industry can install that type of sensor, otherwise not. Both of these may be achieved through a higher level of device integrations. Now, all these sensors we are talking about nowadays, it is SOC basically, system on chip, right, which is on I mean entire sensors, its signal conditioning circuits, everything should be on the chip then only we can, which is called basically SOC or system on chip. Then only we can say that, I mean it is a smart or intelligent sensors, if you had some intelligence and uh, so large scale device integration is necessary to make this type of sensors. In addition, more difficult sensing problems are now being studied, which require a higher level of processing power okay, or more intelligence than is achievable from today's sensors. Okay, suppose a simple thermocouples or a thermistor for making a measurements of some sort of, I mean, uh, 
the functions which will get suppose a nonlinearity can be removed if there is some signal which is of some other sort of a self test systems inside the sensor. So, that type of things I can say it is intelligent smart in a sensor output or there is some checking that the sensor is working or not, which is very common in the case of thermistor and thermocouple. You know some sometimes thermocouple is, is out of order I mean because the junctions because it is a dissimilar junction sometimes the junctions are out or cut and thermistor sometimes fails. Okay, all those things, these things can be suppose if you have a built in self test that means some testing uh, algorithms or testing mechanism by which I can check the health of the sensor, then only I can say it has some sort of intelligence. This is one form of intelligent sensors or smart sensors I should tell. In order to define more carefully the different types of intelligent sensor, it is necessary to subdivide the processor into signal processor which is basically a converter and the main processing unit that is a microprocessor. Obviously, you need, uh, if I need some computations nowadays, so I should have uh, some form of I mean, CPU or central processing unit is necessary. So, one of the easiest way to use that thing is either microprocessors or a microcontrollers. You know 8 bit microprocessors we know that very common form of microprocessors which has um, quite good I mean computational power. Uh, which can uh, which can uh, I mean make some computations, it can make some decisions that type of thing is possible. And more interesting thing is you see most of the sensors what we are talking about is uh, uh, is basically a analog I mean in nature. The signals which is coming out from the sensor whether it is thermocouple, thermistors or any RTDs that are basically these are analog in sense. That means okay the output is continuous whether it is a variations of the resistance or the variations of the current it does not matter. Right, but uh, if I now incorporate that thing in a, a digital form, that means if I want to in incorporate on a uh, microprocessor, obviously there comes that the mixed signal circuits. Right. Now, signal preprocessor or converter carries out low-level tasks such as these are basically low-level tasks because I have amplification, filtering, analog to digital conversions like this one. What are these? Let us look at. Okay. That means, suppose I have a signal which is coming from the sensor itself, it is generating some signal, it might be low in a voltage level. Okay. So, I need an amplification. So, I put an amplifier here. Then I may need a filter also, if it is AC signals I want to unbound it I mean undesired frequency band is to be discarded. So, I am using a filter, then I am using a A to D converter, okay. right. Now, this uh, pop this can be a data equation card also, data equation systems or TAS. Okay, so, this is the entire system. So, okay, this should be already incorporated in a single chip. right? Now, signal preprocessors or converter carries out low level tasks such as amplification. So, this is a preprocessing, it is a filtering, is making A to D conversions that means analog to digital conversions or um, then figure 1 to 3 illustrates the 3 levels of integration which make up sensor systems. That means, both as normal sensors intelligent sensors, smart sensors. So, these three things are I mean I mean we have discussed in the we will show in the following slides three slides what are those actually means actually we want to meet right. There are different uh, differing views at present over the precise definition of the smart sense as I told you it is a it is a very new thing which is coming up there is no precise definition I mean why, why should I call it a smart sensor. Okay, so, there are different views, views from what, uh, one differs from the other. Okay. So, this is a, you see a typical sensor system without any intelligence, without any smartness. So, okay. so I have a you see, I have a non electrical output. Let me take a another type of pen. I have a non electrical output. So, it might be pneumatic signals also, this signal might be pneumatic.
is not it. This I am signaled to new electric converters, I am converting to electrical signals. Right? Suppose in the flow measurements, we have seen in details in the flow measurements that is the pneumatic signals, okay, which is coming from the differential, suppose a, a differential uh, sensing devices. Now, we want to convert that to 4 to 20 milliampere. Electrical signal is coming. Now, signal processor, because this is basically this output will be voltage. Now, signal processor you see it is an entire unit, right? I am talking about just now I, which I have drawn. That means, it has amplifier, it has filter, okay, that type of thing. Now, processing unit not necessarily it can be it can be it can be inside the computer itself. So, this current usually this will be 4 to 20 milliampere of current. This will come. Then I have a processing unit. Processing unit what it will do? It will convert to the digital domain, it will take some decisions, I mean some it will display and all these things. So, there is no as such there is in the entire scheme if you see there is no sort of any sort of intelligence or any sort of smartness in this particular sensor scheme. These are basically sensors or I should say not necessarily conventional sensor, many modern sensors, modern day sensor might be suppose a, a very extremely brand new a uh, micro uh, due to sensor that means where I want to measure. Uh, the uh, oxygen contents in human tissue, which is a very sophisticated sort of very small in size. I want to know that type of things, which is a very new type of devices, but not necessarily that will be intelligent or smartness, smart sensors. Okay. In that type of situation, the entire things I can define, any sensors I, I should say can be defined by these particular diagrams. Okay. These particular diagrams I can, I mean sense any particular, I mean any typical sensors. right? Now, this is an integrated sensors in a sensor system, okay. entire thing as a whole I can I am calling it sensor system, because uh, while I am calling it sensors only that is actually I am getting some measurement right on the particular parameters might be pressure, temperature, flow. Now, when I am making <coughs> excuse me, when I am making the, um, the signal conditioning, when I am making the signal conditioning that times I can say that it is as a whole sensor system. right? So, here you see the sensors we have uh, non electrical output input because not necessarily from the all the sensors we are getting electrical input right that might be non electrical input. So, I have integrated sensors I have a sensors preprocessor then electrical signals and processing unit and electrical outputs what I am getting. So, there are preprocessors and sensors you see in a 1. So, this is a some for sort of integrated sensor you can look at. right? So, I have a sensor unit, I have a preprocessing unit before though it is a current now which is sent to the processing unit or might be the CPU of a computer to the data equation card because at the data equation card usually this is as I told you earlier it is a 4 to 10 milliampere of current this is to be converted in the voltage domain and processed through the data equation card this signal will go to the computers and the computer will process and I will get electrical output. right? So, as such it is I, I, I should say it is integrated sensors that means the sensors and the preprocessors on a single chip. right? <coughs> now, a smart sensor or integrated uh, intelligent sensors looks like this you see the sensor preprocessor processing unit okay, are all in single chip. So, this type of sensors okay, I am calling it smart sensor. Obviously, this processing unit has some decision making I mean functionality so it should be there otherwise I should not say a smart sensor. Right? It can discard suppose a signal I mean some data is coming which is out of band. So, the, the system should be in a position to discard that signal not shown in the electrical output. Right, that type of decision making algorithms or what functionality should be there in the, but as a whole these are smart and integrated sensors. <coughs> one proposes that a device onto which at least one sensing element and signal processing circuit has been integrated is a smart sensor. Not necessarily because when it started people has uh, started to define like that, that one proposes that a device onto which at least one sensing element. Okay, and signal processing unit uh, circuit has been integrated is smart sensor. Well, this definition is little vague I should tell. 
since it is a newer devices obviously you can understand that that this is just developed de definitions is uh, not very i mean uh, well accepted i should say right the shortcoming with this definition is that the most sensors would be called smart even when they processes possess such a low level of intelligence that to call them intelligent is rather ambiguous okay because this i cannot say i mean it's just a i mean a sensor which is signal conditioning something i should not say intelligent because it is not intelligence it is a part of signal processing okay i should not say it is an intelligent sensor right so if this definition so is not very accepted uh, if you say, you can say integrated sensor obviously but not necessarily you can say intelligent sensor instead we will use the term integrated sensor to describe this type of low level smart sensor where most of the pre processor is integrated as shown in the figure 2 we have already shown in the figure 2 that this all the pre processing unit rather the pre processing units are integrated within the sensor itself okay that mostly these type of things obviously comes in the case of semiconductor sensors right instead we will use the term integrated sensor to describe this type of low level smart sensor where most of this pre-process is integrated as shown in figure 2. We have shown already in figure 2, we can um, go back, okay. this is a figure 2. right? Some sort of pre-processing is done, you can see here some sort of pre-processing is done, right? fine. Right? The term smart is reserved to denote the integration in part or full of the main processing unit which adds the intelligence. Okay. That means, say uh, when I am uh, calling it smart that means, it will be either part or fully pre-processed. Okay. So, a smart sensors already we have shown in the figure 3. Right. There is little confusion in this practical uh, definition because all smart sensor must be integrated okay, and intelligent. While any sensor that has significant intelligence which has not been integrated can be called an intelligent sensor. So, smart sensor must be intelligent, must be integrated sensors, but uh, smart sensors uh, if they have some sort of intelligence, but it is not integrated I will just simply call it integrated sensor or intelligent sensors I am sorry. The only definition that remains is that of an intelligent sensor. The definition proposed by Breckenbridge and the Hussein Husson considers artificial intelligence and run as follows. They are telling the sensor itself has a data processing unit with automatic calibration, okay, automatic compensation function in which the sensor detects and discards abnormal values or exceptional values, right? as I told you several times. It incorporates an algorithm which is capable of being altered and has a certain degree of memory function okay. and further desirable characteristics are that the sensor is coupled to other sensors, adapts to change in environmental condition and has a discrimination function. Okay. All these things should be, I mean they should other sensor, there is a combination protocol, all those things then you can call it intelligent sensor. Okay. Not necessarily that means, suppose I have a DVM, a digital multimeter, it can nowadays digital multimeters, auto ranging, auto zeroing all those facilities are there, but I should not call it a smart sensor at that sense. I should rather call it a not also intelligent sensors. I can call it only the integrated sensors, right? Because it cannot discard the values which are coming, I mean out of range and all those things which I have just talked about. You see here, uh, the algorithm which capable of being altered has a certain degree of memory functions, compensations, abnormal values or exceptional values can be discarded, only then I can call it intelligent sensor. This definition is rather long, but does not incorporate the essential functions required to define the intelligence in a sensor. Okay. What are the, how will I call a sensor intelligence that is well defined in particular, uh, particular this, um, this definitions, right. An intelligent sensor must possess one or more of the following three features. An intelligent sensor must possess one or more of the following features, three features, what are those? perform a logical function, number 2, communicate with one or more other devices, okay. perform a logical function, communicate with one or more other devices and make a decision using a crisp or fuzzy data. Okay. That means, too hot or hot, too cold like this fuzzy data, it can take some decisions. right? Only then I call it intelligent sensor. 
and also it should have a communication facility with the other sensors also not necessarily only one sensors I should use if there are 10 sensors you should have a communication facility okay. and perform a logical functions okay. that should be all that means some form of arithmetic computation should be there obviously I need a microprocessor or microcontroller for doing this then only I should say is intelligent smart sensor. This definition distinguishes between an integrated sensor and hybrid intelligent sensors. Okay. It, it might be it is a hybrid in the sense that it is some form of intelligence is there or may not be there. Okay. Now, logical function, what are those logical functions I talked about because I said already that it is a should be a logical function, so perform a logical functions. So, what is that logical functions? In order for an intelligent sensor to perform a logical function, it clearly requires some type of processing unit. Any logical functions as you know, it is a whether it is a I mean adder, subtractor. So, I need a some form of logical I mean if you want to do I need a I mean processing unit. What is the simplest processing unit available? It is a microprocessors. Okay, not necessarily very large um, I mean very highly computational. Uh, processors. Most of the applications we have seen in the instrumentation that means it is 8 bit microprocessor will serve our purpose. So, either microprocessors like Intel 8085 which is 8 bit microprocessor as you know pen time is 32 bit microprocessors. When we call it 8 bit microprocessor 32 bit microprocessor please note actually we are referring to the register size because all the I mean in all processing in all these logical functions and all this when you perform we are have to shift load all the manipulations actually we do in the register itself. There are several registers depending on the complexity of the microprocessors and these registers actually the if you look at the register size we can tell what type of bits I mean how many bits when you said the 8085 Intel 8085 is a by 8 bit microprocessors you can look at the register size you will find all the registers are 8 bit whereas when I call the Pentium processor 32 bit processors if you look at the register size of the Pentium. Okay. Number I do not consider there are several numbers there are or the number of register differs from the 8085, 8086 and, and the Pentium processors, but the size of the register will tell whether it is 8 bit processors or a 32 bit processor, but most of the instrumentation applications will find that this 8 bit processor will suffice right. And uh, if you need some peripheral chips in most of the cases we need some peripheral chips we can go for a. Uh, microcontroller. Microcontroller is different between the microprocessors and the microcontroller is that it has some inbuilt uh, chip which is necessary because in 8085 a microprocessor a processing unit cannot work until unless it has some peripheral chips. Some sort of RAM to uh, minimum RAM is necessary 2 kilo RAM is necessary 2 kilobyte RAM is necessary some ROM is necessary. Okay. This is a minimum thing is necessary uh, okay. in the microprocessors I may need some counter. Okay or timer or counter these all those things are in incorporated in a 8 bit microprocessors like 8051 or 8091 these are basically intel based microprocessors this is 8 bit microprocessors it has 128 byte of memory ram very small but most of the applications you will find that will enough right so that is a logical function in order to have for an intelligent sensor to perform a logical function it clearly requires some type of processing unit the processing unit it most is most likely to be a microprocessor, but could be a some type of programmable logic devices. Okay, PLC also uh, will do, but that will uh, reduce the cost. But nowadays, as you know, microprocessor cost is not uh, very much. Okay, so instead of um, programmable logic controller, you can use it. But the microprocessor, will, most of the cases will work very fine because we know how to programs and all these things microbus in assembly language that will simplify the process. The integration of the processing unit with the sensor then requires a significant electronic design effort. Okay. So, this basically most of the sensors I talk about the integral and smart sensors is basically electronic sensors or semiconductor sensors and effort perhaps through the use of application specific integrated circuit or ASIC. Okay, which is called application specific integrated circuit technology. Okay. So, a lot of integrations are necessary if you want to make intelligent or smart sensors. An intelligent sensor may be able to communicate with its operator. So, provide valuable information about the problems etcetera. Alternatively, an intelligent sensor may communicate with the another device. So, modify its own behavior. Right. 
intelligent sensor may be able to communicate with its operator and so provide valuable information about the problem etc. Alternatively, an intelligent sensor may communicate with the another device so modify its own behavior. A type of intelligence can in its simplest form provide a warning of abnormal operating conditions okay, or more cleverly provide a feedback control mechanisms okay, that I told you that means suppose the thermocouple is not working. So, a temperature sensor is not out of order. So, intelligent sensor should be even in the position to tell that the sensor is not actually working right. That means, say some sort of test mechanism should be there in the inside sensor itself in the or in the integrated chip itself. Intelligent sensor may provide a good level of control such as via digital controllers okay. that is possible if you use a feedback systems and all those things. An intelligent sensor may have some form of high level adaptive control strategy that permits the control parameters to be automatically updated with time. Okay. So, you know the control parameters those who are studying in control you know so you can update automatically. So, that type of situation should be there it will have some I mean it will predict something or it will get some of those data from the as the time changes then only it will update those controller values okay. then only I call it intelligent sensors. The implementation of a sensor which can warn its users or adapt to environmental condition requires some decision making capability. Right? Now, it is very difficult suppose I have a Wheatstone wheel we have studied that suppose I have a I am measuring the load by a strain gauge. Right? Now, uh, as you know the strain gauge is basically resistive based sensors now if the temperature changes environmental temperature changes now usually what we do we connect the that the strain gauge in a Wheatstone bridge okay, either a single strain gauge or four active strain gauge does not matter. Now, if you have a single strain gauge as the temperature changes the environmental temperature changes there is a change of resistance, but I am not I do not want that okay, because the unbalanced voltage of the uh, strain gauge of the Wheatstone bridge will be different. What I want that the uh, output will be only should be dependent on the unbalanced voltage of the Wheatstone bridge and we, um, and basically that. Uh, where that depends on the change of the resistance in the uh, strain gauge itself right. So, simply how we do we, we use in uh, ambient temperature we use another strain gauges so for ambient temperature compensation, but that I should not say intelligence uh, sensor just it is one to one correspondence that if the temp both the resistance changes due to temperature change that will be nullify okay. some sort of decision making uh, system algorithm should be there in, in all the intelligence sensors. Okay. Though I am saying to adopt an environmental condition requires some decision making capability, there should be some decision making capability there. Traditionally, sensors use a parametric data to make a decision. For example, the signal from a diode can be used to provide a overload protection to a device which exceeds its normal operating temperature. Okay, diode can be used as you know, I mean, uh, I mean is uh, used in many places we have seen for overload protection. So, okay because um, in the op amp also as you know in the op amp the output is if you accidentally uh, connect the op amp output to the ground it is not that op amp output will op amp will burnt out. Okay. There is a short circuit protection in the op amp right because with the diode and as you know that uh, in the series regulators okay, we are also protecting the junction which is the costly transistor series transistor by diodes also because if you bias the diodes always you will get across that diode 0 0.7 volt. Right, so that can be utilized to protect your circuit. Right. So, traditionally uh, sensors use parametric um, uh, data to make a decision for example, the signal from a diode can be used to provide an overload protection to a device which exceeds its normal operating temperature. However, more intelligent sensors of the future may use the non parametric methods such as artificial neural networks and or expert systems which relies upon fuzzy data. Okay, expert system as you know is a program or is based on AI based program it has some form of form of decision making algorithm, but as you know this when you are this all basically a program is not this is a software when you want to I mean connect it to a hardware devices to a sensor. So, I have to make it some microprocessors or some microcontroller where this decision making algorithm like neural net neural networks also as you know it is very. Um, it is not very cost effective if you are not a cheap viewer it will be extremely high if you want to realize the neural networks in the wafer. So, if you want to I mean use the neural networks uh, synthetically or artificial neural networks obviously I need some form of computation some form of CPU 
Okay, so microprocessor is the best thing uh, uh, which can, you can give that. The definition of an intelligent sensor used here includes any sensor system that contains a discrete microprocessor unit, right? Either a discrete microprocessor unit because you see that's a SOC or mixed signal circuit because mixed signal circuit is a circuit where both you have a digital and analog on the same chip, right? Now, it is a very talk of today as you know this mobile phone and all these things are basically mixed signal circuits and but it is quite expensive also. So, if we take out this microprocessor unit I mean then we can call it find this intelligence sensor, but in future obviously we will try to make the microprocessor units with the digital circuit some analog sensors also at the same chip. So, that it will lead to a, a mixed signal smart sensor. Consequently, there are a large number of instruments that are classified as intelligent sensors. A few is the examples of intelligent sensors and their applications are listed in table 1. Examples of intelligent sensor system, radiant the sensor class, the uh, sensor class principal intelligent sensor monitors the spatial Fourier transform of the retro deflected light from a surface is basically machine tool control. Sensor class mechanical monitors the generation of acoustic noise by cracks in a metal in non-destructive testing. And sensor class is mechanical effect or sensors for handling objects for robotics. It is for robotics chemical monitors, air intake and fuel conversions in engine control, right. Sensor class chemical monitors air condition for comfort and safety in buildings. Okay. Magnetic monitors eddy current to measure the proximity defects or plate thickness is industrial automations. Now, integrations of signal processing. The integration of the preprocessors and the perhaps the processor itself onto a single chip can bring many advantages. Okay. Why we are calling it, I mean doing to go for intelligent sensors, okay. it looks like this. The most strong argument for the fabrication of an integrated sensor is to enhance the signal to noise ratio. Okay, obviously, if you want to transmit this signal to the outside wall or to two separate chips, signal to noise ratio will not be very good. But on the same chip, if you may figure obviously signal to noise ratio or SNR, which is called, which is usually expressed in dB, okay, 20 log 10, so it is obviously better. The electrical power output from a uh, micro sensor is often low and susceptible to the stray capacitance, inductance and noise. You see these micro sensors are very, very small in nature and one of the, one of the greatest problem is the capacitance. Okay. So, if you want to cut, connect to an external world okay, to buy a wire and all these things that will even the capacitance of the wire itself will play a picture because those values of the sensors or the capacitance value of the sensor is extremely small. In these cases, the direct transmission of the output signal down a long interconnecting wire may be impractical, right? If you want to, because it's a micro sensors that say it has a very small value of the capacitance change, might be if you want to transmit that signal to some bridges for measurements of the capacitance change or accordingly some voltage change, will be very impractical. This is uh, particularly true when, for example, a capacitive pickup is used in a micro sensor. Capacitive pickups is used for many uh, as you know for the while we talk that is a capacitor microphone is there, capacitance are used for level sensing and so many things, capacitance are used for the differential pressure measurements okay, in a, uh, all this, but if the, uh, if the change of the differential pressure is very small, so capacitance change also will be very, very small. Usually these capacitance are all that of femtofarad, so any I mean a stray capacitance which is coming of the same order that will totally I mean change the value of the output voltage. Okay. The capacitance of a lateral resonant silicon structure may be only a few femtofarads. Okay. Thus, on chip MOSFET circuitry is highly desirable in order to remove the effect of the high input capacitance of transmission cables and subsequent instrumentation. Okay. So, obviously, on a chip itself if you can do it that means, the MOSFET circuits remove the effects of this all this interconnecting problem or the interfering or the parasitic capacitance will be immediately removed. Clearly, this will improve the response sensitivity and resolutions of the micro sensors. Resolutions means the smallest detectable values which can be detected output, smallest change of the uh, parameters which I am going to measure which will make a detectable output. Right? 
So, obviously, this will because if the entire thing is I mean uh, if the entire thing is camouflaged by the noise itself. Okay. So, that is I will not get the output. There are other reasons for integrating the signal processing unit uh, with the sensor such as providing an enhanced functionality at a lower cost size and weight. Cost will not be that low obviously, but the size and the weight obviously will be much much low. Now, self calibrating micro sensor this is another important thing for the uh, smart sensors you look at. Most sensors have a, at least two parameters that need to be uh, set during the manufacturing process. This is offset and the sensitivity or gain. Okay. Usually, we do any sensors if it is not simply passive type of things suppose the ammeter or voltmeter. We obviously, we offset if there is offset, offset might be the zero offset also. Usually, we do we set it before taking the reading and adjust the gain also. If it is an active sensor that means, it has some uh, signal connection circuitry along with the sensor. So, that type of cases we can adjust the gain. Your gain is basically as you know we have defined in the first class is also sensitivity. In the mass production of a sensor, the process of calibration individual sensor is expensive and undesirable, but often essential. Right? So, individual calibration is not possible, but, uh, but it is sometimes it is very essential, especially in the case of semiconductor sensors. This cost can reoccur during the lifetime of the sensor because of the parametric diff, because the, if the parametric diff are there, if you are obviously and especially it is very difficult in the case of uh, I mean integrated sensors where you do not have much provision to change any I mean parameters right. So, we have to either you have to throw it out okay, that is only, but you must know whether your sensors are perfectly working or not. So, some sort of testing unit should be there inbuilt so that by which I can know the health of the sensor itself whether the calibrations which I have done at the initial stage of the sensors that is now still valid or not otherwise entire you know, I can throw it out, but the thing is first of all I must know whether that calibration whether I which I did was still valid or not. So, maintenance work is carried out to cali recalibrate manually the offset or gain right. So, it must be laser trimming that type of thing which is very difficult to do. Consequently, there is considerable need for a self calibrating sensors which can carry out its own calibration. And this is particularly true when a high level of precision is required. Okay, when, a, when a high level of precision is required, so this is true even though those are quite costly. The conventional calibration of a sensor may involve the laser trimming on integrated registers. Okay, integrated registers to get a particular typical value, so I can laser trim it to change the value, so that the suppose due to drift, suppose the resistance value changes, so I can make laser trimming to bring it to the value so that my calibration will remain valid. This means that the register frame and the uh, patterning process must be compatible with the IC and the micro sensor technology. Typically register frames like uh, chromium and nickel chromium are vaporized from the substrate by YAG lasers in controlled cuts or trims. Okay? So, that I will get the precise value of the resistance. Now, schematic representation of the signal processing in a smart capacity pressure sensors that you see what I have a sensor unit here which is variable, I have a capacitance to voltage conversions, okay. basically it will be capacitance to voltage because all capacitors ultimately if you measure you put on a bridge I will get an unbalanced voltage. So, this is a bridge circuit, so capacitance to voltage conversion, I have a signal conditioning okay, and output. Now, I have a V reference voltage you see here. So, any sensor, so this I will get a smart sensor, this entire thing I should say, this entire thing I should say smart sensors, okay. this I should say smart sensors. Only if I have the capability of changing these calibrations of this all these three units. So, for that reason there should be some sort of intelligence of the measurements of the output voltage. From time to time I should check, accordingly I will change this parameters so that the whatever the output desirable output for a particular change in capacitance will remain same as before. Only that time I that time I could call it a smart sensor that is the thing reference voltage some sort of you see I am changing here offset and gain of the signal conditioning circuit. Okay. If there is already due to drift okay, is that it has changed I will change the offset I will change the gain. Okay. So, I must know whether my calibration is still valid or not. Right. 
Figure 4 shows a block diagram of the signal processing that takes place in the capacitive sensor and its associated electronic circuitry. That is we have just shown. Let me see it again. Okay, schematic representation so the signal processing in a smart capacitive pressure sensors. You know the pressure sensors also we have seen that thing that means in the differential pressure because why we have we have seen that we are the in the and we have a differential pressure sensors. Let me take a black pen. steel diaphragm this you already discussed right still let me just make a recapitulations so this pressure is p1 this pressure is p2 in the p1 is greater than p2 this steel diaphragm will move like this one is not it and this inner side is coated coated with some metal preferably gold and that type of things inner side is basically uh, a, a section of a, uh, a section of a sphere okay this is a section of a sphere so this inner coating and this plate will make one capacitance so if there is a change of capacitance so there is a change of the uh, capacitance differential capacitance because this at the middle it will be c now when it is moved like this one so this is if i say that this is c1 and this is C2. Okay. So, C1 will be previously C. Okay. Now, see so if the D is increased, so what will happen? If D is increased, capacitance will be decreased, say, okay, delta C. And C2 will be C plus delta C, is not it? So, this is our actually you see the capacitance to voltage. Now, if I put on a this in on Wheatstone beach, these two sensors in a Wheatstone beach, then what will happen? I will get an unbalanced voltage. So, this is a capacitance to voltage uh, conversions. So, and also from pressure to capacitance, from then capacitance to the voltage change. So, from pressure, differential pressure to capacitance change, from capacitance change to voltage change. This capacitance, this is the capacitance change to voltage change this one this one is basic sensor which i am giving pressures i am getting a signal which is you see the two signals are coming because it is differential in nature okay so the i am getting a signal which is corresponds to the pressure so i am getting a change in the capacitance which corresponds to pressure right okay the Capacitive pressure, uh, uh, my pressure micro sensor has an on chip CMOS switch capacitor circuitry to perform the accurate capacitance to voltage conversion because you know that this can be done with a switch capacitor circuits also. Okay. Accurate capacitance to uh, voltage conversion, signal conditioning, and automatic compensations for the device temperature using a relative voltage. The advantage of the switch capacitor circuit, its performance depends totally on the ratio of the capacitance rather than the rather than the uh, and the absolute value of the capacitance. That is the reason switch capacitor circuits are preferred, though there are some limitations of the switch capacitor circuit like parasitic capacitance, but we have some uh, configurations where I can use the switch capacitors in the parasitic insensitive structure. Right? Basically function is something like this that I have a, uh, I can take a blank page. If I have a uh, switch a capacitor like this one, sorry. If I have a capacitor like this one and I have a switch which is toggling between these two, so this resistance, this capacitance can be replaced by resistors. Okay. So, the resistors can be simulated by a capacitance and two MOS switches. Clear? So, this will give you the resistor simulation. The advantage of this now, this is a parasitic in, uh, sensitive. I can have a uh, in parasitic insensitive if I have a structure like this one. If I have a structure like this one, this is parasitic insensitive structure, right? We can have parasitic in. I mean, I mean, um, I mean, we can have the switch capacitor integrator also. Now I am not going to that details of all those things.
Let us see you see the CMOS switch capacitor circuit to perform the accurate capacitance to voltage conversion, signal conditioning and automatic compensation for the device temperature using a reference voltage V reference. By changing the V reference, I can change the automatic uh, temperature compensations and all those things. The temperature sensitivity of the smart sensor D uh, alpha B is related to the reference voltage V reference by the relations V reference V naught 1 plus alpha B T minus T naught. And alpha B is programmable with a 3 bit resolutions. Okay. Now, self testing micro sensors. The ability of a sensor to test the functionality is highly desirable, right? Whether it is working properly. As you know, I do not know whether I mean um, that when you switch off, we do switch on a, uh, a micro processor, so you switch on a Pentium processor, usually the Pentium tests all the I mean logic conditions by a built in self test systems okay, which will tell you which uh, will if you will load all the accumulators with all zeros. If it does not load then it will you will know there is some problem in the chip itself. So, it do it and usually you do it very fast with a nanosecond. So, you only it is not realizable to you, but actually this is uh, they are doing. This is called the built in self test. Recent developments in the in the field of smart sensors are leading to sensors with some limited diagnostic capability. This is basically an ability of a sensor to determine whether it is a functioning normally or not. A complete failure would usually be detected by the user as the output either current or voltage falls below the operating specifications. Okay. So, this is another thing I mean we have to, we should have some mechanism when it falls below some value. So, we can say there is a failure. There are various scheme of uh, determining this type of failure of the sensors, okay. so, different, uh, testing scheme of the sensors or functionality testing of the sensors. Okay. Suppose when you buy a sensor obviously we check something for this voltage whether it is showing this current or for particular temperature it is showing the proper value of the current if it is 4 to 20 milli ampere outputs all those things these are I mean, parametric testing right functionality testing. In many cases a sensor can fall uh, fail to perform adequately, but provide a reasonable output. In many cases it may fail to perform, but, uh, but provide a reasonable output. Right? In these cases more sophisticated quality assurance because it may, may not it is giving some output for particular cases or may, may not get the correct output if it fails I mean may not get the for some other value of the uh, sensor input. Right? For instance, a noise characteristics a power spectral density may be related to the physical property of the sensing element that is changing and affecting its performance can thus be used to provide diagnostic information. Okay. So, diagnostic sometimes you know that I mean um, uh, one of the things that in a integrated circuits that means the bias current changes okay, where the bias current of the circuit changes abruptly then I can say there is some problem in the circuit. This is some sort of diagnostics information which you can get. Okay, we can continuously monitor this bias current of the circuit and predict whether the your circuit is healthy or not. A significant level of self testing has been reported on a smart micro accelerometers in which the basic mechanical performance can be tested routinely and thus diagnosed for the faults. If there is some faults, so I can detect it. Now, built in self test will be incorporated in future microprocessor. Built in self test as I told you microprocessor Intel. Uh, from 80386 onward till Pentium processor they have a beast or built in self test where you have the on chip devices which will uh, check the health of your or test of your uh, devices. Here in the case of micro I mean sensors it will there should be some mechanism by which or built in systems on the same chip by which I can check the whether the my, my sensor is okay or not. Multi sensing. Smart sensors often improve their performance through the use of other sensors to monitor undesirable dependent variables. Okay. Multi sensing is another form of redundancy basically. Okay. So, if the one sensor is not giving correct outputs, if the nine sensors are giving correct outputs, so I can say this that a particular sensor is not correct. With all the nine sensors are giving some out, I mean similar input output, okay. obviously I can say the sensor number 10 which is not giving some abnormal output. This is some sort of redundancy. For example, the temperature sensitivity of a micro sensor could be compensated by integrations of thermodiode near the sensing element. 
A smart sensor can also eliminate spurious rather than the systematic erroneous signal. For instance, an array of identical sensors can be employed and coupled to a microprocessor which calculates the average sensor output or perhaps discards any anomalous reading in your voting logic that we can always incorporate. Okay? In a, if you have a microprocessor computational mechanisms, I can do it with a proper program. The former approach has been adopted to make a smart PA sensor with 10 identical sensing element. Integrated sensors which may also have some higher level of processing capability or intelligence. For example, the use of an array of dissimilar chemical microsensors and artificial neural network processors which can be incorporated by a microprocessor has led to the development of intelligent electronic nose. Electronic nose means it can smell. Okay. So, this basically will give you the I mean some form of intelligence communications. The readout electronics may be accommodated in a smart sensors. The simplest form of the readout circuitry is often an current or voltage output. Okay. For example, the 4 to 20 milliampere current loop is common standard and provides good immunity to noise. You know the voltage in most of the I mean instrumentation cases we will find the always we convert this voltage to current because it is immune to noise. So, the noise immunity is very important while you are communicating from one sensor to other, communicating from the sensor to the uh, your PCs or, uh, or computers, okay, from the sensor to the uh, transmitter, usually all the transmitter transmit current not the voltage, right? because voltage will be easily corrupted by noise. A second approach is to use a frequency modulation because frequency modulation will be totally different. Okay, at the out receiving end also will be I will receive frequency. So, there is a chance of because even the amplitude is getting I mean corrupted or, or I mean or it is totally camouflaged by the noise it does not matter because at the output at the receiving end I will look at the frequency and predict that my if I have a demodulated there I can get the actual signals. right? For example, resonant microsensor produce an oscillatory output signal which can be either counted or converted to a voltage by a circuit indicated onto the sensor chip itself. Right? Moreover, the signal can then be converted to a digital signal on the chip and the digital output interface to a bus systems. Okay? Because this all you see that so I am talking about the mixed signal circuit that means they and the same processors I mean everything should be there that means the digital circuit is there analog sensors will be there. These functions are commonly integrated onto a smart sensor although the reasons for the doing so are often scientific rather than the hard commercial decisions. Okay. It is not very I mean it is acceptable by the industry people okay, if you make that type of unless you are well justified because the cost is a great factor for making such type of sensors. You have to look at the market potentials also. One important considerations when deciding whether to fabricate an integrated sensor is the compatibility of the material processing required in particular the temperature range over which the technology basis operates okay, which is shown in figure 4 sorry it will be figure 5 rather I should tell. So, it is not a figure 4. So, this will be this will be figure 5 rather. this will be figure 5 I am sorry. Okay, relative cost of the smart sensor IC technology as a function of the processing temperatures. Right? Nowadays you know if you need to always I mean very wide temperatures I mean uh, devices some uh, sometimes some people need uh, the sensor can work in a range of minus 50 to 150 degree centigrade or minus 190 okay, to uh, cryogenic temperature that type of thing. So, this all demands I mean uh, various wide temperature functions. So, relative cost and the smart sensor technology as a function of the processing temperature. Bulk CMOS is relatively inexpensive, but it is limited to a low temperature range and may be unsuitable when some inorganic active layers are required. In contrast, silicon on insulator SOI can withstand a higher processing temperature, but is a much more expensive process. Now, application of smart sensors, the field of radiations microsensors has had some 
Notable successes cameras with on chip amplifications and temperature compensation are run on the market. Smart optical sensors are relatively easy to make because the silicon sensors technology is compatible with the IC processing. CCD images, image sensors with integrated image intensifiers have also enjoyed some commercial success, such array sensors however very expensive. Smart mechanical sensors such as pressure sensors were initially fabricated at a relatively high cost and in low volumes. However, the interest of the automotive industry in the low cost micro accelerometers for the airbags has changed this situation. Now, you can make it okay, even though the cost is quite high, but it does not matter because automotive industry needs that type of airbag which can um, decelerate, it can sense the high speed deceleration because whenever there is a uh, and there is an accident or there is a I mean there is a clash between the crash between the cars with another car or anything or any other hard object. So, if there is a tremendous amount of deceleration. So, that will be some sensors which will decelerate and activate the airbag. So, that the persons who are driving who are sitting in the front seats uh, or sitting or driver as well as the co driver. So, they can save their life. Smart silicon hall effect devices have been fabricated which include a built in offset for the null voltage and the internal temperature compensation. Perhaps the most difficult, but potentially most rewarding development in the field of smart sensors will be in the chemical and biology sensing. Traditionally, chemical sensors suffer from the various problems such as drift in any offset parameters, degradations of sensitivity due to poisoning, interference from humidity and other chemical species. The design and the integration of the intelligent processing unit, the algorithmic biochemical sensors, Microsoft could correct this deficiency and would create large markets in fields such as environmental monitoring and mechanical diagnostics. Okay. With this, uh, I come to the end of the uh, smart sensors. Welcome to the lesson 35 of industrial instrumentation. Uh, we will start to discuss the uh, chromatography. Uh, in general, actually, we call it gas chromatography, though it is more popularly known, but it is actually it is a chromatography because the chromatography is both for the gas and the liquid. Uh, so, in these lessons and subsequent lesson, that means lesson 36, we will consider the gas chromatography, we consider the chromatograph. Let us look at the contents of the lesson 35 contents. We will basically have introduction to the systems, what the actually chromatography look like, what is the packing materials used and what is actually uh, where it is used, all those things we will discuss. You know, the chromatography is basically the separations of the fluids, because in many industrial situation as well as in the chemistry, so we need this type of situation when there is a mixture. So, we want to need, know, it is very difficult to know the content of the mix, percentage content of the mixture of the two gases. Thank you.